So back in November, I got to catch the 20th Pokemon movie in theaters, I Choose You. A retelling of sorts of the beginning of Ash's journey and how he formed his bond with Pikachu. Only this time, it shows what happened had Ash gotten the Rainbow Wing from Ho-Oh. I've seen just about every Pokemon film and my opinions on them get more negative from movie 12 onward and going into this one, I didn't expect much. But what are my thoughts after seeing it? Well, let's get the big thing out of the way first. I'm not even going to try and explain the story because we'd be here all day. Long story short, it's just a mess. There's a bunch of different things that happen throughout the runtime and a good chunk of stuff has nothing to do with the main goal of finding Ho-Oh. Also, Marshadow was completely unnecessary and made everything confusing. He kind of overshadowed Ho-Oh in a movie centered around the darn thing. They always have to put the new event legendary in the new Pokemon movie, even at the cost of structure. And even now, I have no clue if Marshadow was the good guy or bad guy. On a lighter note, the animation was great as always. I hear folks say this was one of the best animated products of the whole series, but they don't know what they're talking about. Just about every Pokemon movie looks great, and the anime can too when it wants, but regardless, this is still a good looking film. Another thing I liked that initially had me raising an eyebrow was how this movie took place in an alternate timeline. It was a pretty good route for a retelling because any issues that arose, I just had to remind myself it was all in an alternate universe, so there was no need to freak out. It's fine there's some Gen 4 and 7 Pokemon here, it's fine the emblem on Ash's hat isn't what we've all known it to be, it's all a different take. Even when it came to Ash's companion Sorrel and Verity, they get a genuine pass from me. Yeah, they were Misty and Brock light, but I did like them and the bit with Sorrel's Luxray was actually pretty grim. Did not see that coming and that did leave a lasting impression. I didn't mind that Brock and Misty weren't here, especially not after they showed up in Sun and Moon. Oh, and uh, for all of you thinking Piplup and Lucario are here because they're hinting a Gen 4 remake, y'all are stupid. Has it ever crossed your mind Piplup and Lucario have been really popular Pokemon since their introduction? Seriously, don't get me started on all the crap Lucario has been in. Anyway, seasoned fans weren't left hanging here, there were a couple nice easter eggs for those with a keen eye. When Ash is watching TV at the start, we see Nisha and Cory from Mewtwo Strikes Back battling with Shellshocker and Brute Root, though Cory also used a Gengar and he never had a Gengar in the move- the, so sorry, alternate universe nonsense. We then get a great retelling of the first episode in the first five minutes, complete with lines lifted from the original script, and Takeshi Shudo even gets a screenplay credit. And before the film started, they played that remix of the first theme song with footage from most of the prior movies, minus films 4 to 8 due to Max contracts or something, and had the clips match up to the beats of the song. It was a good way to drum up excitement, and I almost felt something. Dare I say, nostalgia? The voice acting was also good, and I have to say, Sarah Natticheni has really come into her own as Ash. Everybody else does a good job, despite the script being a little blah, to put it lightly. This is also the first film to not feature VA Casey Rogers due to her apparent retirement. When a bell sprout showed up at the start of the film, I just knew it wasn't her. Now, despite this being the main drive of the film, I didn't get too nostalgic watching, because aside from living and breathing Pokemon every day of my life, a lot of stuff happened completely differently. I mean, what do most people remember about Charmander after he evolved? Not listening to Ash, but here he was completely obedient, and the same goes for Butterfree's arc, which I should mention added nothing to the story apart from the movie saying, hey, remember Butterfree? Remember Butterfree? Yes, I remember Butterfree! But like I said earlier, I kind of appreciate the change. They opted for a mix of new story with familiar elements, and it's not a straight retelling, so why not? Though can you imagine that instead of Cross, they kept Charmander's original trainer Damien, and he still had Incineroar? I think that would have made for something really cool. Oh, and Team Rocket shows up in what may just be their most useless role in a movie yet. I don't even think Ash knows they exist in this timeline. They show up to say some hokey joke only to get blasted off like three times throughout the film. Admittedly, they don't do much in most of the movies, but they had nothing to do here, and that is pretty disappointing. Another bit of a downer was the soundtrack used for the dub. I don't know what's happened since the beginning of XY, but Pokemon's dub has used less and less original music since the end of 2013, and it's leading to scenes not being as powerful as I think they ought to be. Out of 55 pieces of music, one original track was kept in the whole film, used at the very end. Not even the title theme was used here, and I think that's the first time since 4Kids' early days where it hasn't. 4Kids stopped interfering with the soundtrack starting with Pokemon Forever, and even when they did, I can remember their music really well. The first movie's Tears of Life and the track where the trainers head for New Island, I can hum that stuff till the Tauros come home. Can't say the same for the newer stuff. In the Japanese version, the tracks used were remixes from the anime, mostly from Kanto, but also stuff from other regions like the Sealed Chamber from Gen 3. That would have made this feel like more of a celebration, and I know I'd be saying to my brother, dude, listen, do you hear that? And humming during the scenes. The dub music wasn't awful, but yeah, it does kind of hamper the experience now that I know what I'm missing. 
missing out on. It's really there just to fill a space and nothing more. Now to skim over one scene in particular, the one that had people up in arms riding in the streets. Pikachu talking to Ash. When my brother and I saw it happen, we just laughed to ourselves and a couple people in our theater were like, wait what? But not to the degree of other places. I'm sure it worked out a little bit better in the original Japanese, but it's still weird. But not to the point where I'm freaking out online and whining about it like some big baby. Come on. And yeah, what Pikachu said doesn't make sense because he didn't like going in the ball before he met Ash, but whatever. Ash was hallucinating during the scuffle. Something might have got scrambled. Coming out of I Choose You, I felt really confused and a tad robbed. This doesn't really feel like a film 20 years in the making, and I feel like they only scratched the surface with ho -Oh, which is a shame because I wanted to see it in a main role since I was little. That said, I would say this was one of the better Pokemon movies to have come out in the last little while. That doesn't really mean much, but you know what? I had a fun time watching it in spite of its flaws. A real fun time. That's more than I can say for the XY movies and especially Clash of Ages and its Ale Hoopa Ring crap. Plus, it was great to see Pokemon on the big screen, something I've never had the chance to do until seeing this movie. And I got a cool Pikachu card and download code for Ultra Moon. It made for the true Pokemon film experience. If I were to rank it, I'd put this somewhere in the 15 to 10 range. It's weird and all over the place, but it's one I'd rewatch again, and if you have an interest in it, I say give it a go. And at the time of this upload, the next film is gonna take place in the same alternate timeline as movie 20. What does that hold for the future? Eh, I'm not sure, but I'll bet good money that this movie's probably gonna be mediocre. Hey, I'm not being cynical, it's just a fact. I just hope they prove me wrong. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed what you saw today. Now, if you have an opinion on the 20th movie that you'd like to share, feel free to do it in the comments below. And if you so choose, feel free to give this video a like, share it with a friend, subscribe, check out all my social media links, all that good stuff that I'm always going on about. And I guess I should suggest some of the videos I got on screen or uh, even my Patreon page if you're new here. If that piques your interest, it's all in the description. And with all that said, I will see you guys next time. Later.